Oh, hello. Hope you're well. Um, in this video, I'm going to be replacing this little cabinet with a five drawer unit. But before I get to that, it means I've got to empty this. The cabinet I'm making to replace it is of a similar size with a short full width drawer at the top and two pairs of smaller drawers below. There's a central divider to separate the lower drawers and they'll also be separated by a horizontal bar made of edge grain birch ply like I did with the router bench drawers. Strictly speaking I should also be using Finsa Fibra Colour coloured all through MDF for the carcass but I just don't have enough of that and don't much fancy buying a whole sheet just for one cabinet but because there's not much of the actual carcass on show I'll be using Finsa's Hydrofugo and I'll be lipping it with square strips of the Fibra Colour. Yeah I know sometimes you just got to use what you have. I'm also going to be using this build as a bit of an experimental platform to try out a few different things that I'm going to be referencing in future videos. The top drawer, for example, is going to be made out of birch ply and the lower ones from birch ply alternatives, birch faced poplar uh, for the drawer boxes and then maple faced reinforced globulus ply for the drawer fronts and I'll be making those out of a single piece like this so the grain flows nicely across all the drawer fronts. I need to make the cabinet before we get to the drawers of course and I've already cut the hydrofigo to size. That's the base, the two ends, the central divider and the front and rear stretchers at the top. There's also a stretcher for the central divider and that needs to be notched into the rear of that panel. I've marked up where the drawers will come to and I've cut a couple of templates from Scrap MDF and here I'm actually using the template to trim down the central divider to size. That's one way to guarantee a good match. And with that cut I can mark and notch out the back of the panel for the stretcher. There are many ways to do this but it's quick and easy on the bandsaw. And having done that I realise I need to trim the template down to match the height of the notch. There's always something, right? I need to mark the mid panel fixing positions accurately so I'm using the sliding square, a combi square referenced off the front edge to mark the centre and then I'm extending that down across the edge as well. I'll also mark in just for our own reference where the fixings come in on the edge and face positions too. So that's everything that's everything cut and marked up. My lights aren't on. They've been off all the time, haven't you? You didn't even mention it. Um, so that's everything uh, cut and. Uh, so that's everything cut and marked up. Uh, I said earlier that I'm using this build as a bit of an experiment and I'll be using dowels to put this one together as I've got a couple of duo dowelers that I want to use on this project. I'll be using this oops, 2022 vintage Triton doweler to join the base to the sides and I've got a 22 year old Maffel doweler, an original one from 2001 to join the sides to the top uh, front and rear stretchers and uh, somewhere I've got a little plastic dowel jig that I'll be using for the mid panel because that self centers really well. Yeah that bit was a bit blunt. I got there in the end though and with a dowel in each hole and the mid panel flat on the base I can use the notches in the jig to get everything lined up and drilled out. There's more detail on this in the dowel jig basics video by the way. Links in the description as always. Triton dowel are next, first on the edges of the base and then the inside faces of the cabinet sides. I'm lining up the outside edges of the panel against the edge of the fence and I'm using the centre line on the fence against the mid panel pencil marks I made earlier. And onto the Maffel Dowler for the upper stretchers. I thought that a pair of dowels 32mm apart 
probably wouldn't be enough for a workpiece that's 100 mil wide, so I'm making two plunges each time lining up the outer edge of a mathol fence against the edge of the stretcher. But I'll just use the outer pair of holes for dowels, as you certainly don't need four dowels across a piece that size. And for the inside faces, I've used the stretcher as a guide and clamped the other one in as a temporary fence for the Mathel fence to bear against. If that sounds complicated, it's easier to do than to explain, though I probably could have just used a pencil mark. As I haven't used the Triton or the Mathol before, I think a dry fit makes sense just to make sure I haven't made a Dowler Howler. So that's not looking too shabby as a dry fit. A couple of slight niggles with uh, the top rear stretcher, but that was my fault. Um, dowels take a bit more effort to get in than dominoes, I've discovered. Um, but otherwise, you know, no issues with that at all. I say this wasn't specifically about the two dowelers. We'll talk about those in uh, a future video. But overall, very happy with that. The, the rear stretcher that I notched into the mid panel, keeps that in place. And at the front, there'll be a birch ply decorative edge trim to keep it sort of upright and located. I've already cut those birch ply battens and I did the fiber color strips that I'll be using as the edging as well at the same time. And I'll get that added onto the front edge of the base sides and top uh, stretcher. Just gluing it on, holding it down with tape while it dries. One thing I have realized is that the fiber color is a slightly thicker board than the Hydrofugo 19mm versus 18mm, so I'm going to line up the inside faces and I'll trim back the outers later on. With the panels cleaned up, I can get this cabinet glued together. There really isn't much to see here. It's basically the dry fit, but with some added glue. Oh, and a couple of screws through the base to keep that mid panel secure. I'll say again though, coming from a loose tenon background, I'm finding that dowels really take a surprising amount of effort, even with a duo doweler or two. As I showed in the Loose Tenon Basics video, a 5x30mm Loose Tenon has as much glue area on the faces alone as a pair of 6x30mm dowels. And on a purely personal level, I'll take a single Loose Tenon over a pair of dowels all day long. I'm using a pair of heavier clamps to pull the top stretches together with the sides and then lifting the clamps slightly so the bend in the bar doesn't affect the shape of the workpiece as the glue dries. At least that's what I hope. All right, that's all come together quite well. Uh, I've got to get the draw runner bits in next. Uh, I've recut this sort of template thing. The one I had it was twisted and I was getting, yeah, there's no point in having it if it's not accurate. Um, the top drawer is just going to go on plywood drawer slides, so they'll be in on that runner set back slightly. One thing I have done is change the batten at the back here to a piece of birch ply because the MDF, the Hydrofugo, 
that I was using before is a very slight different thickness and I want to be able to reference off the bottom edge of it and it wasn't just wasn't working out so I've remortgaged a very small piece of uh, birch ply in there so we'll get the top ones in then the mid ones then we'll do the front fascia little trim bits get the feet on and we should be pretty much in business so yeah we'll get on with that Using the templates makes it really fast to get the birch ply runners in and all at the same height. And the runners are just glued and pinned on with 18 gauge nails. Of course, if I'd have fixed the batten in after the top runners, I could have used the same template, but since the side runners are now in the way, I'm just clamping the old MDF batten under each top runner for the new birch ply batten to bear against and then add in enough glue and nails to help keep that central divider in place. Back around the front now and the decorative edge grain birch ply trim is being glued on and held in place with tape while the glue sets. and a couple of pins driven in from the sides just for good measure on the full width lower trim. And then it's rinse and repeat for the top section. I'm using kitchen cabinet style adjustable feet so that I can get the cabinet in under the bench, then raise it up to lock it in place. The leg sockets are just screwed on, and once that's done, it's time for a coat of finish on all that edging. I'm using a Carnauba wax from Leo at the Hand Eye Craft channel. Thanks, Leo. And yes, I have been pronouncing it wrong all those years. The wax goes on very well with the stockinette cloth, both on the fiber color lipping and the birch ply trim. While the wax soaks in, I need to cut down the legs, an easy job with the bandsaw, and then they can simply be pushed home into the sockets. And the cabinet slid under the bench, snug fit. And then the legs wound out so the cabinet locks in place. Okay, so cabinet's all in. I've just fitted, just cut and balanced in the draw fascias just to give ourselves, myself particularly, a better idea of how it's going to look with the grain and everything. This is the first time I've cut the maple plywood. And you can see how the grain is going to flow through there. That's all looking pretty good. Obviously it'll have a coat of wax uh, on there which will knock the colour back, the hand eye craft wax and each of these drawers will have a handhold cut out as well. But yeah, overall, very pleased with how that's worked out. <laughs> Bit of a cheapskates uh, cabinet, just lipping the front face in uh, fibre colour like that, but you know, needs must, and you've got to make the most of what you have. Uh, I'll call this one done for now though, thanks for taking a look. Uh, more to come on this particular build, there's the draw boxes to do. Uh, we're using different types of runners and I'll also be having a chat about birch ply as well. Of course, there's the dueling duo dowlers to come too, and a whole host of other videos, and who knows, I might get a table saw at some point too. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. All right, take care.